know what's in that mold of wine. All these slides look yellow. <laughs> Okay, so I want to talk about uh, some recent uh, research uh, from my lab, and hopefully at the end of this uh, five minute presentation, this uh, cryptic title will make some uh, sense to you. So, uh, I'm an immunologist, I'm interested in terms of how our immune system responds to uh, infection. So if you look at this guy here, sure half the audience is sympathy and the other half is just diagnosed it as man flu. But <laughs> irrespective, I'm interested in terms of how we respond to infection, in this case, uh, a virus. So you're infected with a virus, how do you clear that virus from the body? So this is actually what's happening the next time you get flu, this is actually what's happening. So this, these are pictures taken from an electron microscope showing the infection of bronchial epithelial cells that line the lungs with the influenza virus. And when the influenza virus gets inside the cells, there are receptor systems inside the cells that recognize that virus and tells the body a virus is present. And responds by producing a series of proteins some of which are called interferons. These interferons are very important because they help in terms of clearing the virus, to kill the virus, and to stop the virus from uh, spreading. This picture on the right-hand side actually was uh, painted by my daughter Amy, age 10. It's a variety of viral clearances sucking the lollipop, currently. <laughs> so interferons are good, but they can also be bad. So when the virus has been cleared, it's very important that the body turns off the production of these interferons. And if this doesn't happen, we can end up with inflammatory diseases, in this case lupus, which is characterised by this butterfly rash uh, on the face. So research in my lab really focuses in terms of how the immune system recognises an infectious agent, how it responds and clears that infectious agent from the body. And we try to study that at very detailed levels, at the cell level and at the molecular level. So as I've said, interferons are important, but they need to be tightly controlled. If they go out of control, we end up with inflammatory diseases. And recent work from my lab has focused on a protein in our bodies called PNO3 that turns off the production of interference. So once interference have done their job, PNO3 turns off. So how do we know that? So I'll just show you some data. So this is taken from a mouse. So in black there, these uh, results are taken from mice, which don't have PNO3. And you can see lots of interference being produced in response to a virus. Because lots of interference are produced, the virus is cleared very efficiently from the body. So in the white here, we have normal mice. These are mice here, which don't have pleno 3 So pleno 3 is turning off the production of interference. Also, if we look at how the mice actually deal with the viral infection, if you look at normal mice, after about 12 to 14 days, 60% of the mice die in response to this uh, viral infection. Whereas mice, uh, without PLENO3 are protected. So we published this work in Nature Immunology, a very important journal in our field, but I put this up for another reason. It's, if you look at the authors on this, there are seven people here from my lab, and so this represents about three years' work, so it's an incredible amount of work for these guys in the lab. So it also received some print media coverage, and one of the things you'll notice in terms of the print media is that there's a reference here to MS, multiple sclerosis. Why is that the case? Well, the reason why it's so important is because interferons are important in multiple sclerosis. MS patients struggle to produce interferons. So as a result, one of the drugs that's actually used in the treatment of multiple sclerosis is interferon. One of these interferons, interferon beta, and that is used in the treatment today of multiple sclerosis. So we've asked the question, some of the studies in our lab focus on addressing this question, can we trigger the body to produce its own interferon? So in MS patients, can we trigger cells in MS patients to produce their own interferon and overcome that effect? So this here is a leaf taken from the marijuana plant. And the reason why I put this up is because uh, there are various anecdotal reports suggesting that cannabis has some beneficial effects uh, in the treatment of MS. And certainly some M MS patients uh, report some beneficial effects. So we've been doing some work on a uh, synthetic uh, chemical that mimics one of the components of cannabis. This synthetic chemical is or wind compound. And what we can show is that here, MS patients struggle to produce interference, but we can overcome that by giving this synthetic cannabinoid. We can set up an animal model of MS, called this EAE model. So the higher up here, the more uh, the greater the disease severity. If we give this synthetic cannabinoid, it protects in this animal model of MS. So basically, we think that we're able to control uh, interferon production, and this may have therapeutic effects. I hope this isn't a bad omen. When it was covered on RTE, we were surrounded by Mitt Romney, who was riding high in the polls at that stage, and Trapattoni, who was preparing for the German match. The outcomes there are not good. Hopefully, our outcomes will be much better. 
And then finally, just to acknowledge the work of the people in the lab. So uh, this work involved uh, it was a real team effort, and also obviously the funding agencies, SFI, HRB, and Enterprise Ireland. Thanks very much.